Hailstorm was released by Irem for the NES in 1991. It's a side-scrolling platformer, where you play as a robot designed to save the Earth from a malfunctioning defense gun. The situation is, it's the year 2501, and a laser that's designed to protect Earth from alien invasions, which is armed at the battle station Cyberg on Pluto, has gone apeshit and is wiping out other planets, and aiming its next target at Earth. The only way to prevent Earth's impending doom is to activate the self-destruct mechanism. So the M308 gunner is sent in to infiltrate Cyberg and blow it all to hell. Along the way, you'll encounter a plethora of robotic enemies that I assume are the defense mechanisms for the defense gun, which sounds like something out of the Department of Redundancy Department. You can shoot in four directions, horizontally and vertically, both ways, although some of the ceilings and floors will block your bullets. The ceiling platforms that you are allowed to fire through are also the ones you're allowed to jump through and land on. The big, unique feature of this game is the ability to change the field of gravity. By pressing up and A, you'll switch gravity and walk on the ceiling, while down and A will send you back to normal. You can use this ability to take different paths, access hard to reach areas, and fight off enemies in different ways, including just passing by without even having to engage in battle, which you may want to consider now and again because you can only take one hit and you're dead. Like any good shooter, there are power-ups to assist you. The P icon is the power beam, which is a larger and more powerful projectile than your normal gun. The S icon is a shield that will protect you from the enemy bullets, but lasers and the physical enemies themselves will penetrate the shield. The G icon will give you a gravity fireball that will render you invincible when changing gravity in the form of fire. The A icon is armor that will let you take an extra hit of damage. The C icon destroys all the enemies on screen, the 1-up gives you an extra life, and the B gives you some bonus points. Unfortunately, you can't possess the power beam and the shield at the same time. If you pick one up and you already have the other equipped, then you'll lose the one that you had originally. This can be especially frustrating if you don't intend on making this exchange, as you might feel that having the one that you've already got would be better suited for the area you're on. I personally feel you should be able to toggle this in a pause menu of some kind if you can't use both at the same time. Each stage is broken up into two parts, with the boss battle to follow the second half. If you die, you'll return to whichever half of the stage you're on, including the boss battle. Even if you get a game over, you can continue on the second half of the stage if you made it that far, but you can't continue from the boss battle. You do, however, get infinite continues, and there's also a password system in case you want to shut off the game and continue from where you left off. This compensates pretty well for the difficulty, which isn't bad at all at the early levels, there are 7 total, but it starts to really pick up steam in the second half of the game, and some of the boss battles in particular are fucking insane. The soundtrack is also pretty cool, but what really impresses me are the graphics, particularly the backgrounds. What other NES game has that background scroll? The most important aspect though to any game is the gameplay, and this category gets a thumbs up for me too. The controls are fluid. The enemies are cool, the level design is creative and has plenty of variety, and you'll just never be bored. It's a fun, solid game. So let's play through it. You'll start out against these blue guys who are among the easiest enemies in the game. They just walk back and forth and essentially act as nothing more than target practice. Then there's a pair of these white robots that travel around the perimeter of their respective platforms. One shot will do them in two. Flip the gravity when you get to these spikes to make it easier to take out the blue guy and this pink thing that fires flame shots at you. And right after is the transition to the second half of the stage. Sneak under this platform to take out the pink gun, then hop up to get the armor and gravity power ups. You can use the gravity fireball to wipe out the pink guns instead of firing, otherwise flip the gravity and take them out from above or below, whichever one is easier to access. Soon after is this big blue monstrosity that slowly moves towards you. Fire as rapidly as you can, back up, and continue firing until it finally explodes, and move on. Grab a power beam from the ceiling up here, and right after that is the first boss. It'll fire purple rings at you, which are slow, but they come out a few at a time, so make sure you get between them. Its weakness is an energy shield that pops out of three areas, the upper left and upper right sides, and one below in the center. You'll have to flip gravity to get to the ones up top, and stay down on the floor to hit the one in the middle. There doesn't seem to be a pattern, so you'll just have to wait till it appears before you move in, or just take a guess and wait by one of the pods. After you get enough hits in, it'll blow up and it's on to stage 2. The funny thing about this stage, and several others after this actually, is that it loops vertically. So if you flip to the ceiling and keep working your way up, you'll end up coming right back to where you started. 
First blast these robots from above and below and hop up. Flip the gravity and head down here to get the power beam, quickly jumping twice so these green vices won't sandwich you. Stay as close to the middle as you can so both vices have more distance to travel. Now these arrows on the platforms that point down mean you can't jump through the platform, only in the direction of the arrow, so you won't be able to get the bonus points. You'd have to stay down below instead of flipping the gravity. And since the beam is more important than points, choose it instead. Jump through the platforms and you'll find a spot where you can grab bonus points if you do a small jump to lure them out and then slip past them, but it's not even really worth it in my opinion. Hop down past these two vices quickly, then blast the hell out of the small ship. It's kind of like the sub boss from the first stage. Then head up past these two vices and you're done with the first half of the stage. Right off the bat in the second half there's a one up waiting for you. To get it you'll have to jump over these spikes and flip gravity so you can get into the nook. Then carefully do the same on your way back. Then flip gravity and head up this way. Now these barricades will open and close depending on which direction you have the gravity set on. So when you get to this first one, flip it to normal so you can get by, then flip it back so you can slip down. But you have to flip gravity again, so jump as you flip it so you don't get hit by the barricade. Then head to the left, flip it, and move on. Kill the pink guys vertically by flipped gravity, then get on the ceiling, and head into this nook for an armor upgrade. To move on, you'll have to slip into this nook, flip the gravity so the barricade's out of the way, and head through. Flip the gravity to get these barricades out of the way, move down this platform and stay on the ceiling to get a power beam. Down the home stretch is a series of those ships from the first half of the stage down these narrow hallways. Make sure you stay two rows down or above, as it fires shots that travel across one row above and below. If there's one right in front of you, just fire straight ahead and the boss is right up ahead. It's a series of five of these robotic bugs against the wall that fire a laser beam straight ahead. Fire as fast as you can and watch for the shell to open, as it'll fire right after. Like the last boss, there's no pattern as far as when the next one will attack, so be ready to jump straight away. Eventually you'll take out all five and move on to stage three. There's only one enemy through virtually all of the third stage. These machines that follow a track horizontally across the room. Blast them when they're directly in front of you, flip the gravity to walk along the ceiling above the spikes, grab the gravity power up and blast the green machines in front of you. There's a shield power up on the ceiling up here. Back on the floor to the right is an armor power up, and soon after there's a white machine against the ceiling in this narrow hallway. Slip down here to kill him from below. Right after is the checkpoint to the second half of the stage. The green machines are constant throughout this portion too. There's a power beam and an armor upgrade above and below the floor here, but the way the arrows are set up, you can only get one of them, so choose based on which one you need more, or prefer. Stay on the ceiling so you can get across these spikes, and then you'll have to flip the gravity back to normal to trigger the wall of flame off. Then carefully jump over the spikes this way and blast any machine that might be coming around the bend. There's another of these white gunners up ahead. Blast it to hell and flip the gravity to walk the ceiling over the spikes. Flip it back once the spikes are on the ceiling, then flip back to the ceiling when you get here, as you'll need to hug the wall using this protrusion to get over. Grab the bonus points in this little nook here, then get off the ceiling on this platform to head to the boss. There'll be lasers crossing the center of the room vertically and horizontally, and this little purple machine, which is the target, will float from the top down to where you are, with two small shits steadily floating around him. Now, you can try to maneuver your way between the lasers and hit him as much as you can before he changes location again, prompting you to continue doing the same whether it be across or flipped gravity, but I like to just stay in the spot you start in, and jump over the small guys that try to take you out at the knees, shooting the purple guy all throughout, and taking small jumps the entire time so as not to make contact with the laser. If you have the power beam, it'll be quicker, but as long as you're consistent with your jumps, you should be able to take him out without much of a problem. Stage 4 is fucking bananas. You're enclosed in this square transportation device of some kind that moves right, and obstacles and power-ups will essentially scroll in your direction. Grab the gravity upgrade right off the bat, avoid these green balls as shooting them will do nothing, and shoot the gray things so the bullshit that floats around it won't be a problem. You'll start scrolling up, slip your way between the green balls with the gravity flip to grab the armor and flip it back down to get the power beam on the other side. Now be ready to jump and flip your way back to the ceiling to avoid these green vices that will close in on you. And then you'll scroll right again as the white gunners show up. Shoot them or just run past them and avoid their fire. 
flip your way between the green balls, take out the gray things, and get ready for these blue ships that'll fire boomerangs at you. And they'll also reappear after a few seconds of a dormant stay after you shoot them down. Regardless of their regeneration, you'll still want to shoot them. Just keep your distance so you don't get tagged by boomerang. Then you'll encounter a mini boss, these four red fuckers that circulate the perimeter. They move fast, so time your jumps right and fire straight ahead like a maniac. Hopefully you'll get a lot of shots in. When they slow down and eventually stop, they'll each fire a projectile in a different direction. Slip between these and blast them. They'll pick up speed and start the process over again. But hopefully you'll have gotten enough shots in that you'll take a few of them out and maybe get them all before they get to the next cycle. You have to deal with a lot more bullshit in the second half of the stage. Grab the armor upgrade and the shield power up and block off these pink crabs with it. Make sure you position yourself so you can hold the shield in their path and stay on the opposite gravitational field as the incoming crab. I recommend against the gravity and power beam upgrades up ahead cause you'll lose your shield and it's more difficult attacking these things than it is defending. You can also shield off the attacks of these round ships that float by and take them out at the red spot in the center. Soon after, these beams will form and try to close in on you. Fire at the green things in the middle to get them out of your way before they do. Then these ships from the second stage come back and try to attack you from each side. One high and one low. Stay low and blast the one in front of you out of the way. Don't jump cause you'll end up in the line of fire of the ship above you. And avoid the green balls during this. They'll stay centered. But shift to the side as you'll scroll diagonally a bit when the ships are after you. The boss is right after, and this is one of the biggest pains in the ass in the entire game, if not the biggest. The two guns on the top and bottom will fire lasers towards you, even as they move. And at the same time, you have a giant heart floating around the room in the pattern of one of those screensavers where the object never hits the corner directly. If you have the power beam, you can somehow manage to weave your way between the lasers and the heart and blast the guns away before eventually taking out the heart. The easier method is to equip the shield and hold it through the ceiling and floor to take out the guns, which are by far the biggest threat in the small room. Once they're gone, the heart is easy. The fifth stage is a constant chase. You're running down the corridor, sneaking by these guns whenever there's an opening, but all the while a beam that extends from the ceiling to the floor is in constant pursuit. It's slow moving, but if you spend too much time waiting between every laser for an opening, it'll catch up to you. You're going to want to move at the first opening you see. So you obviously can't touch the lasers, but you can't sneak by any either with the reverse gravity or otherwise. They'll always change direction according to where you are. You also can't touch the guns themselves, so don't walk on any of them. You can shoot them down, but that's really only necessary if you're in position to take them out before you cross their path. If you sneak under one while it's not shooting, then you're just wasting time attacking it when you could simply continue walking. Attacking from the side also doesn't work. You'll need to take them out from the front of the gun. The first tricky spot is here. Slip under and take a few shots of the gun, and retreat before it fires again. Then flip gravity and slip in front of the horizontal gun, retreating back to where you were so you don't get hit. Then come back to finish him off. When you get to this clusterfuck, slowly slip between the lasers and flip your way onto the ceiling, grabbing the armor on your way and using the edge to flip back and get a few shots on the gun, flipping your way back up to retreat. If you have time after clearing the path, shoot down the gun to get the power beam at the bottom. Flip your way onto the ceiling here, wait for the opening and slip by to get the C and wipe out all the enemies on the screen. Take out this guy and grab the shield up here if you want it. I prefer the better gun for quicker kills personally. And right after that is the beginning of the second half of the stage. Kill the gun below here and grab the armor and bonus points. Then up here you'll see these little fucks fly overhead. Just stay in the middle and keep running so you don't get hit with their return fire up top. When you get to this clusterfuck, flip to the ceiling and fire down at the one from underneath. Then slip down here and kill the one in the middle. Then flip your way back to the floor and duck under the fire of the last one, raising your head to kill it when it stops. At the end, there are a few lasers protecting a power beam and the gate to the boss respectively. Hopefully you already have the power beam and don't need it. Cause I don't know how the hell to take out that laser, the wall is blocking him. Wait for the beam to come out and take out the guns before moving on to the boss. It's really tough to time it right otherwise. The boss is a pain in the ass, metamorphosizing robot with various attack patterns depending on which form. It starts out blue, firing diagonal lasers at you. Stand back, weave, and jump your way around to avoid it and blast it. 
After enough shots, he'll turn red and fire lasers straight ahead that change direction alternating between up and down shots. Dodge when they're coming down and aggressively attack him when the upshot is on its way. As long as you don't bump into it during your jumps. Then it turns green and starts firing these vertical laser bars across the screen. Flip gravity if you can't jump over them or duck underneath them and fire constantly. Then it starts a sequence of hybrid attacks with modified versions of all three, except this time it's firing two simultaneous shots of each color's respective attack before changing to another. Be on your toes with this one, it's fast paced insanity. The good news is, this is the last form, you'll finish it off for good here. The sixth stage auto scrolls, but vertically instead of the traditional horizontal, and you can go through the top of the screen and pop out of the bottom, and vice versa. At the beginning, these red machines will fire flame shots, but may close them up, depending on your gravity. You can't make it through the fire unscathed, so flip gravity to get by. There's a shield and power beam up ahead. Flip gravity to get the one of your choosing and bring it back to shut off the flames. Grey gunners make their return here. Stay back and fire at them to clear them out of the way. Up ahead is a grey platform with several guns stationed. Flip gravity back and forth and use the blue platforms to bypass all that bullshit. Then there'll be a pair of these ships passing by. Keep your distance vertically, set the gravity so you're not near them and pass by. Shut off the flames of this red guy and you're onto the second half of the stage. Flip the gravity to shut down the flames and grab the armor upgrade along the edge of the platform here. When the gray platform shows up, stay in normal gravity. Shoot the gray gun from the side and then flip it back to walk by the rest of the guns easier. Kill the pink guns that are straight ahead and fire at the blue ship flying above. When you get to the home stretch, flip gravity and jump down onto this platform. Flip it back to clear the flames, flip it again on the next one and you're at the boss. A set of three cubes that slide around the perimeter of the room. You have to destroy all three of them, but you can't hit the floor or ceiling, and they move at like a million miles an hour, so you're having to jump from one block to the next continuously without missing one and hitting the floor, and without jumping too high and hitting the ceiling, and having to fire at the blocks to get rid of them. Now the problem is, if you manage to wipe out the other two, you have one left and hardly have any time to get rid of it, because you're going to smack the ceiling right away. So you'll need to nick them all at roughly an equal amount of damage, and you'll know when they're prime real estate when they turn red. The only way you'll be able to wipe out the last one is by firing straight down. In fact, I recommend you use this technique the entire time since you'll get more shots in. Just don't do it to finish off any of the blocks so you don't fall on the floor, unless it's the final block. The seventh stage isn't really a stage at all. It's a fucking gauntlet of all the bosses you faced. First, grab the power-ups you want from the three presented to you, and head right to start it off. Use the same strategies as you did the first go around. The good news is that if you die, you'll continue from the boss you're on. You don't have to start all over. When you finish off all six bosses, you're at the self-destruct machine. You have 30 seconds to maneuver the device on the right into the wall. All you have to do is shoot the target in the center several times and it shifts over. Do this four times and it's all over. The only threat is the 30 second timer, but there's no reason why you should even come close to that. So after facing all six of the bosses from earlier in the game in a row, you don't even get a final boss. Don't know whether to be disappointed with that, or relieved that you don't have to fight another fucking boss battle. So then you get your congratulations text, and a password for expert mode, in case the normal mode wasn't difficult enough for you. Metal Storm is a very underrated game. It looks great, has smooth controls, a nice soundtrack, impressive level design, and overall it's just plain fun. Why this game fell as far into obscurity as it did is beyond me. I'm not a big fan of how getting a special weapon can supersede the weapon you're equipped with, but aside from that, and some parts that are cheaply difficult, I don't have any other complaints. This is well worth giving a shot if you haven't already. And that wraps up this edition of Aqualung's Game Reviews. See you next time. Thank you.